gonna start the stream. Let's see if YouTube is gonna update me. It is. We are streaming. We are live. Now, I haven't done this in uh, quite a while, so I'm a little rusty at the old streaming here, but um, yeah, let me know if if anybody comes in here and watches this at all. Let me know if uh, it starts getting a little bit crazy or slow or laggy or something. I'll figure it out, but we're in the green right now. Should be good to go. I was going to sit around and design some crankbaits today. Um, my chair is going to creak a lot, too. I'll lock that in. Um, I was going to sit around and design a bunch of crank baits tonight, um, just to print off later. Uh, I was going to sit around and do that by myself, so I figured I got the whole setup to do some streaming, so why not do it? Um, I'm going to use Fusion 360 primarily for this, uh, probably completely, so if you're watching this later and following along feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try and answer uh, as quickly as possible let's see I will go into fusion 360 now we got a yellow we're in the yellow I'm just gonna let it go it'll be okay there we go we'll hop into fusion we will hop into Fusion 360. This is one I have designed in the past. Uh, I think I designed this one a couple days ago. It works okay. Let's see if I actually have this version. I do have this version right here. So uh, I don't know if you can really see that or not. I wish I had an inverted view of this, but that is the one from Fusion 360 into uh, real life it has some pretty good side-to-side -side wobble it's not really what I was looking for so I'm gonna try and design a different one up but we're gonna do all the design work in Fusion 360 and then we're gonna do some finished modeling in mesh mixer so another Autodesk project uh, product so all right let's switch it let's switch her over get this back going I'm in the blue, or blue, I'm in the yellow, so I don't quite know what that means. Hopefully it's not too choppy or anything like that. Been having some internet problems. Uh, got charter spectrum, so you may or may not know how that goes, but let's just open a new design here. I'll try and talk through it. If there's any comments or questions uh, in the stream, feel free to leave them. I'll try and answer them as I do this. Like I said, I was just going to do this myself anyway, so why not do it on the interwebs? Have people tell me how I'm doing it wrong, you know, the standard. Um, I guess just for time's sake, I'm going to probably try and design two crankbaits uh, today, and then uh, the stream will be over. So however long that takes me, this will be a good kind of litmus test on how fast I can do this thing. Usually um, it's under an hour per one so we'll shoot for that we'll shoot for under an hour if that's going to happen I don't know so this is normally what uh, normally what I do here I just go through I find one that I like I don't really and then loosely base, base it off of that the Bandit Lure, actually, really good action. I like that one quite a bit. Um, I don't really know here. Doing the stream at about 11, maybe 10.30 uh, Central Time, so I don't think there's a whole lot of people around. But normally I bounce ideas off of people, but let's just let's try and be independent here. Let's try and be independent. Make it happen ourselves. Um, what are, what am I feeling right now? Do kind of a stick bait. This looks kind of cool. 
let's just loosely model it off of that. So I'm just going to save this image to a stream folder. This is all my YouTube stuff. Let's just save that there. So I'm going to save that to the folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert it as a attached canvas. We're going to we're going to select this face to put it on. We're just going to drop it in. Let's see. I don't know if we're really going to have to do another one. I think we'll be okay. What are we looking at? We're still in the yellow, so we're okay. So I'm going to drop this canvas in there. I'm going to just say... What's going on? Why is it why is it being like that? We'll cancel. It's already in there. So we can go uh, to the canvas itself. It'll show up here in our in our drop downs. I'm gonna go into the canvas and I'm gonna calibrate it. And I'm gonna guess on kind of how big we want this. Probably like three three and a half inches or so. So I'm just gonna pop this right at the back then one at the nose so we're looking at like 85 millimeters let's say that so now we're at about 85 I'm gonna start with a spline so start a new sketch on this side I'm gonna try and do each half kinda separately I'm just gonna go around with a spline kind of loosely on this because you'll see when we switch over to importing it into mesh mixer it's gonna end up being a little different than this anyway so like I don't know if I like this nose part probably just gonna bring it through here should be fine the spline is gonna can form to all these edges here so I'm just gonna all the curves should conform pretty well to if you get any really strong twists or turns it's always good to add a few more in that turn there we go so now we have a representation of the side profile so I'm going to stop that sketch real quick. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to press pull this, but I'm going to do it symmetrically. So as much as I pull out here is going to go out to the other side. Make that a new body. And then that's all I'm going to kind of deal with with the canvas for now. So I'll turn my canvas off. I'm going to do a sketch from the top. I'll create a sketch up here. Then I gotta kind of think about where I'm going with the, the how it's gonna be profile-wise, right? Like from the top, so skinny kind of like this is what I'm thinking, almost kind of like a stick bait. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna set a middle line here. I'll go like this, like that. Then I am going to use the spline again. I'm going to try and hit kind of the start of this body with the spline. Probably come up here. I'm going to push the nose out just a little bit. And I'm going to kind of make it a little bit wider towards the back. Not a lot if it's more of a stick bait type situation. Eh. Control Z undo the best thing ever. Eh, I don't really like how th skinny that is so I'm going to bring this back out. I'm going to kind of try and get it out here more. Ah, we can move it around in a minute. 
I'm just going to kind of do that and end it there. So now we go with our select tool, we can move it around again. If we turn the body off, kind of going to want to move this, I think. I want it kind of sweeping out. Yeah, kind of like that. Not too crazy, but not, you know, not too boring either. Give it a little bit of a sweep. And I can come in here and mess with these. Something like this, maybe something like this. Uh, uh. You can move the individual strength of these as well. So, how much that influences everything. I guess you could say like the pitch of it, I guess. You can kind of straighten it out more individually in there. Uh, probably, I'm going to have to probably get in here and mess around. That's going to mess with too much. <sighs> See, the second you do this stuff live, it just goes nutty. That should be fine, actually. I like that little hump, humpiness for the head there. That'll be all right. So then I'm going to go up to sketch again. I'm going to mirror this on this line. It's so going to mirror this profile on this mirror line. It's going to give me a symmetric rock to the back. Same section there. I'm just going to do this big line here, big rectangle, make it all one so I can cut that away. I'm going to stop sketch, bring my body back in, I'm going to grab this, I'm going to press pull, I'm also going to do this symmetrically, I'm going to cut that so then we're left with this body, which is almost where we want it but not quite. So what we got to do now, what I found to be the easiest in this situation is to come up with a couple sketches. We'll do one on this side first. And I'm just going to split this body into four. And I bet there's a better way of doing this. It's just this is how I've kind of figured out to get around some of the modeling issues without sculpting in Fusion. So I don't really like sculpting uh, Infusion 360 very much. Uh, I don't think it works quite as well as like mesh, mesh Mixer and or anything else. So we got that one line in there. We're going to stop that sketch. We're going to do another sketch from the top. Again. Another sketch from the top. And then what we're going to do there is we are going to do another line from here to here. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to stop this sketch as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split. Well, that didn't work at all. Why isn't that on the origin? Oh, that is the origin. That should work. Maybe. We'll see. Alright. So then we're going to do a split body. We're going to split this body, obviously. And we're going to split it with this one first. So that's going to split it side to side. Say OK. So now we got two bodies there. Then we're going to do another split body. We're going to split this and this. And we're going to use this splitting tool. It's going to cut it into four. Four different bodies. 
So now they show up here. We got one, two, three, four. So now with this next part, all we're going to do is we're going to go into a new sketch facing it. Like this here. We're going to give ourselves our reference line, which will be right here. So now we just put that line in. We're going to check, uh, cancel. We're going to check where our sketch is. It's about right in the middle, uh, which is nice. What we can do here now is we can set, uh, we want to see where we're actually sketching. So we can go in there and we can do uh, a section analysis on the origin, like that. You say okay. Basically, that's just a cutout of where our sketch actually is. So it gives us kind of a good baseline on where to put our sketches. So I'm going to go up and just do a spline curve. So what I want to do is kind of make this belly up. <laughs> that's not really the right terminology, but what I want to do, I want to concave the the belly of it upwards slightly. So, it just started a whole new sketch, of course. So I'm going to go back into my original sketch. And I'm just going to do a spline to make this lure belly kind of meet up to about right there or so. I think that should be good. Then all I'm going to do is draw a box around it, just so we can cut out some more, some more uh, of that body. So now we have a, essentially we've just built a tool to cut that out. So then we're going to go back into what we just did before, which is a mirror operation. We're going to select every part we want to mirror, which is all of those. We're going to select our mirroring line so we have another one pop up. And we have to decide kind of how we want the top to interact. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to do another spline. And I want the top to kind of curve a little bit more. Not crazy, but. I kind of want it to have more of a dramatic kind of shoulder, I would say. You know, something like that. Like that one comes up the sides really quickly. This is more of like a kind of a shoulder situation. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm just going to repeat the same process. I'm going to make a box around it, which is with uh, as many 90s as possible because. 90s are always good. And hopefully without doing anything like that. Kind of stupid. Didn't line it up properly. There we go. Then I'm just going to repeat that same process. I'm going to grab that line, that line. Really? Mirror first. Grab this, 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 and this. I'm gonna mirror it on here. I'll say okay. Computer's gonna freak out for a second. And then we have those four. So then I'm gonna stop this sketch. I'm gonna get rid of that section analysis so we can see what we're working with. So now we've split it up into four bodies because we want to be able to run these. I'm going to run these as a sweep to cut. So what I'm going to do is go to body one or two. Let's do let's do the top first. We'll sweep the top first and then we'll see um, and then we'll sweep the bottoms. It's always good to sweep um, either the two top bodies or the two bottom bodies first. We'll see. Sometimes it gets a little, 
Sometimes it gets a little funky. So I missed one of these lines. So I gotta get in here and do this number. Close that out. Stop sketch. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select this. I'm going to do a sweep. And I'm gonna select this path here. See, it says it didn't like it, didn't like parallel either. So it'll, it will intersect with itself right here. I'm trying to make this curve. It doesn't like that at all. Which is kind of frustrating for us. Kind of frustrating. But we can get it to about... Let's try 0.99. There we go. We can get it. Sometimes you can trick it a little bit by uh, changing the, the end distance. So we do a parallel sweep on there, and it's going to cut out that part of that body. All right, so now I'll add in that other top body so you can see a difference. Oh, it's right there. It's kind of hard to see, though. So I'll take that top body out. See how much we cut off there? So we're starting to get that fusiform body shape that we all know and love. So I'm going to remove that other body. There we go. Remove that other body. I'm going to do this. Do another sweep. do it on this path here oh I kept that other body in there didn't I oh, how frustrating this is why we made four bodies by the way there we go we made four bodies so what we can do is take that off and then run this operation and that doesn't allow it to hit the other body so we're gonna go 0.99 again we're gonna cut that body then we're gonna bring in the second and you can see these other bodies in the background they'll be fine we'll remove those in a minute um, yep so we're gonna take this then we're gonna go back in here do a sweep on here. We're probably going to run into the same issue because it doesn't want to do it. Yep, so we'll end up with two, but we'll get two cuts, so that's fine. So now our top is nice and fusiform. So we get rid of our top and we start working on our bottom. We're going to go in here, and do this side. And then once you kind of get this going, it's it's a lot quicker than this. But, but see, that one works fine without having to move the distance around. We're going to cut that side. Then we're going to go in and find our left side. There we go. Our left side is body two. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna modify that, we're gonna sweep that, go to a path, we'll do that. That'll cut that one as well, so we say okay. So now we can turn our sketches off and we can add in our bodies, which will give us our basic fusiform that we wanted out of the crankbait and we have to find which bodies are which so we want two in there we want one in there we want three in there and we want four we don't want any of these other ones in there you can see how this method is a little bit glitchy right because you get this overlay here 
which is kind of a pain to deal with later but we will correct that right now so what I'm all I'm going to do here is I'm going to save that as an STL and I'm just going to save it to whatever I don't know what we should call this skinny live stream bait oh hey rover just saw you say hey good to see you how you doing it's been a while since I've been on here hopefully everything's going well so we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna uh, switch over to this and I'm gonna try and find mesh mixer because I haven't done mesh mixer in a long time I think I'm running on a really old version as well but you know that just that happens you can't you can't always uh, you know be on top of stuff all the time that would be exhausting all right let's switch back here let's switch back all right so now I'm in mesh mixer uh, I don't know what version this is I'm sure it's out of date three point four point three five it's probably out of date but I'm sure it'll be very similar to whatever you're using I'm sure or I'm sure um, let's see live dashboard rover says he's doing okay that's good okay is better than bad that's for sure um so the key thing to remember here is when you do something in Fusion 360 or even Tinkercad to some extent, if you're going to do any um, special sculpting to it, like in a program like Mesh Mixer or maybe Sculptress or anything like that, the thing to remember is that those STLs are getting output as a hollow STL. Excuse me. So they're a hollow STL so we need to make them solid and mesh mixer allows you to make them solid really easily so you just go into edit and you make solid and then you can say what you want so I'm gonna say I want it accurate I'm gonna say I want it down to about 0.2 millimeters because that will be my printing resolution and I'm gonna update that depending on your computer speed this may take a while it all depends on your computer then it comes out with it's in interpolation of what it thinks is going on. So you look that over and you say, is that look good to me? Personally, for me, that looks good right there. So I'm fine with it. I'm going to accept. So then it, what happens is it's kind of like a layer in Mesh Mixer. So you get two of them. I'm going to go to my non-solid. I'm going to get rid of that because all we care about is the solid one. So now to make things more organic, um, I use Mesh Mixer. You can also use Sculptress, uh, but then you have to focus on OBJ files only. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to go into the different types of um, sculpting brushes and such. So I'm going to do a bubble smooth, and I'm going to bring the strength down a little bit, size down a little bit. What Symmetry does is this line, anything you hit on the line for this side will be echoed on that side so you can see this side it's doing the same thing on that side I got a dog hair in my mouth my dog's ridiculous and shedding everywhere so I'm just gonna come in here I wanna make this more organic you can turn the strength up and the size up to kinda make it easier for you if you want um, I'm just gonna kind of make it look more look more like a fish kind of sculpt it around kind of get get artsy with it you know you want to kind of watch your size too you don't want to get too crazy with it and control Z is gonna be your friend with this for sure so I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to kind of make this probably 
a little bit smoother there. I'm just gonna bring this tail section in a little bit. Probably try and grow this back a little bit more. Um, if you're gonna be printing at like a 0.2 layer height, right? I wouldn't be overtly concerned with how good this looks. I mean, we're not modeling for a we're not for for we're not modeling for a uh, game engine or anything with this, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, the printer is going to be able to handle that just fine. Flatten that nose a little bit. I'm going to shrink smooth that back together. Like that about. I'm going to bring the body up a little more. You're just going in there making it look the way you want, you know. Nothing too fancy. Just going in there making it look how you think it should look in your head, which everybody's head is different. Let's face it. Somebody, when you're doing this, it's going to be completely different than what I have a vision for in my head, vice versa. But frankly, they'll both catch fish, I'm sure. Or if you're like me, you just never find fish to catch, so. I would like to start doing actual outdoor videos, but I'm telling you. Can't catch any fish. We are in the middle of duck season here in the upper Midwest, waterfowl season, so I have been focusing heavily on that. And work, of course. You gotta work. Let's see, I'm gonna add in now, I'm gonna go to the draw. I'm gonna add in what I think are gonna be the eyes for it. So I'm going to go like, probably like that. Pretty high strength. There we go. Popped in two little eyes. This is more of a fusiform body shape than I really like, but um, it's okay. I'd like to move this in a little, so let's try that. Let us do a flatten flatten at a pretty high rate go in there kinda of freak out for a second because it looks like you ruined everything but then we'll uh, we'll see we'll see if we actually did I don't think we did we'll see though then I'm gonna do a shrink smooth on it Turn up the strength quite a bit to see if we can't move that in and around a little bit. Went a little heavy handed on that. Bring the size down. Bring the strength to stay about 60. Oh, I might only do one crankbait tonight. I'm caring too much about this, you know? They're just prototypes. Speed is key for prototypes. So I'm gonna, once those, early in, Rover says, early in the AM, Tuesday and Thursday, Tanner does the live stream around 7 AM, 7 to 8 AM, <coughs> excuse me cool if I'm around I'll try and see it I've just been so busy with so much random stuff
and YouTube's been serving my videos horribly. So all my view counts are down. I just don't think anybody's seeing them lately. Which I'm not really too upset about. Like, it's fine. Because I do this stuff mostly for me, but... Just to have fun. But one of the biggest parts of that is, like, having fun and being interacting, you know, interacting with the audience, you know. Comments and stuff, downloads of STLs and stuff, see what the community's doing. So if nobody sees the videos, then nobody talks on the videos and all that, this, that, and the other thing. Alright, so, yeah, I think that looks a lot better. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is probably scale this out slightly. So I'm going to go back into edit and transform. That's a line, but I'm going to transform. I think I'm just going to try and scale this out. That's almost a little too much out. And that's rotation. Cause like I don't want it too, too fat either, you know. Uh, it looks almost too whale, too much like a whale. Let's see, let's transform. We can just scale it up. Potentially, it'll go like 1.2. Do a uniform scale on it. I actually don't mind that as much. I think it might swim a little goofy, but... Uh... Let's try and take this corner down right here. Try and, try and blend that into the side a little more. See if we can't do that. Three D Tanner. Three D Tanner is the one that does the nine eight seven a.m. to seven to eight a.m. So if you're watching this back, check it out. And then uh, Rover says I'm ninety three subs away from getting off his list because if you don't know, Rover has a super awesome I'll put it in the description right now Rover's channel super awesome 3D printing list of creators under a thousand subscribers YouTube's telling me I'm live right now I don't think you've done the list for a, a while, Rover. I got your channel in the in the description now. You're good to go. Um, super cool list of kind of 3D printing tech channels, that sort of stuff uh, that you should watch. And he was kind enough to put me on there. But now I'm coming up uh, almost on a thousand, which is pretty nutty. Like, I never would have thought at all that people would be like, hey, I should watch this dude. But I am glad that people are. I'm glad people are getting something out of it as well. It's a big reason for this channel. As much as I like making a bunch of mistakes on videos and get called out for it, which happens quite a bit, and I am glad for it because then I get better. I also like to hear about people doing better because of things uh, that they learned from the videos. I think that's the biggest for me. But alright, I think 
think uh, I think we got that the shoulders or the ribs. I guess it would be on that to come down a little. I like that enough. I think I'm gonna go in and scale it up to 1.2. I'm gonna accept that. So then all we're gonna do is export that as an STL. Let's put it in crankbaits. What should we call this one? Not a shortcut. Let's call this one Rover is working on a new design with an external site for an HTML of the spreadsheet. Oh, cool, and make it so you can download it. That'd be pretty sweet. What are we gonna call this? The knife edge. We'll call it the knife edge. So now we know this body is solid and we don't have any modifications to it so I just like to do body solid no mods and we'll call it knife edge just in case it actually does work which I you know you know how that goes more than likely to won't because that's, that's how design works um, alright so let's switch her over then to back into Fusion 360. Should we try d different transitions? Oh, look at that fade. Oh, ho, getting fancy. All right, so then what I'm going to do is you can continue to work off of this um, from your how you set up the crankbait. You can continue to work from that. I just prefer to start a new one. Uh, Cause these are just I've been pumping these out, just trying to get a nice, good action on each one of them. So it takes a lot of iterations. So I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna insert a mesh, and we're gonna insert our crankbait that we just made. We're gonna do the knife edge body solid, no modifications, and the knife edge will load right in there. So there it is. You can see the orin, 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 orientation, <laughs> the origin of the project is in the middle, which is always nice. It just loads in the center because we exported from Fusion 360, so those X, Y, Z coordinates continue through, especially if you use another Autodesk project, which is what uh, the... Uh, <laughs> What's it, what did I just use? Mesh Mixer is an Autodesk project, so um, it'll stay with that same orientation, so you know it's right in the middle, and anything you do left or right of this is is going to be good. Here's where it gets a little tricky in Fusion 360. If you use uh, mesh files like STLs, you import them in, right? So what we did is we inserted that STL that we exported from Mesh Mixer. Problem with that is uh, it's not a body right um we're gonna make it a body but the second you make it a body you can't do any history you can't record any history in fusion 360 it's done after that so essentially you can't go back and modify so i'll show you that once we kind of figure out what to do here but we're on the right side so what i like to do first is i'll just start a sketch right here on the right this is going to be our wire frame. We're going to do a through wire on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this in. I'm going to bring that wire to about right here. I'm going to say that looks good. Then I'm going to bring it down here. Probably. Yeah, that looks good. Then I'm going to go here. And let's let's uh, let's go from this side. So I'm going to want to have my I right there. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna go here and right there. So now I know that's gonna be the base of my wireframe. I can get my mesh out of there, and then I can just do this arc, three-point arc. Put it like that. That. 
that. Get it as close as possible. So now we have this wire frame. What we can do with the wire frame now is go up create a pipe and I know that my wire, a good size for this wire frame is uh, 1.6. That really makes the the wire fit inside that channel really well. So uh, I'm going to do that 1.6. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to turn that body off again. I'm going to go into sketches. I'm actually going to create another sketch over the wireframe because it gets a little tricky here. So all I'm going to do is uh, put in over the wireframe. I'm going to do about six millimeters here. I thought I had a like a a finished wire that I could show you. Um, I don't think I really do though. Yeah, I don't think I really have a finished wire for you. But anyway, when you tie off the wire, uh, you oh, oh, I got got one end die coat placement. One little end there, you might be able to see that. Uh, it's just you wrap the wire around and around, so you want to give that a little extra space. So all we're doing in here is just giving a way to model in a hole for that. I like to go in about six millimeters, something like that. So I'm going to remove the body just by clicking off of it, and then I'm going to go through the same deal here. Create a pipe. But this one is going to be 2.6 millimeters because it's got to be a little bit bigger for that wrap around on the cord. I'll create pipe. 2.6 millimeters. Say OK. I'm going to add in that body again. So this is the full wireframe, right? So you're starting to get the idea. You get this loop for the wireframe back here. A little skinny on the back end. Not horrible. I mean, it'd be nice if this was slightly bigger. So this would be all complete, but it'll still work just fine. I'm not, I'm not going to get too picky on that. It'll be all right. Everything will be all right. So all I'm going to do is modify. I'm going to combine all of these bodies for the wireframe join those together so now that's just one complete body comes in and out so we got the wireframe done now what we have to do hey Ron Floyd how's it going good to see ya good to see ya at least some people are seeing the notifications for this thing I haven't done a live stream forever push that tube in a bit more rover you mean the the tube for the thing for this it it's in there another like six millimeters or so that'll show up really well here in a minute so we'll get we'll get to that in a second let's uh let's take a look at our canvas and see how the bill came out so a little bit different design they did for the eye. So I'm going to say the bill's going to be like a, we'll make a pretty wide bill. Why not? So I'm going to create a sketch on the top. That's not the top. Jeez. So we'll do a top. Create a sketch on the top. So frustrating this program sometimes I tell you not very intuitive so this is some of the problem too with the symmetric so when the mesh gets re uh, when the mesh gets re triangulated out 
to an STL, sometimes you'll have this variation. So you can see that it's not completely symmetrical, but it's so close that with an FDM printer, it's not really going to matter that much. Ron says is good. He's good, but it's cold in Oklahoma today. Winter is coming. That's what everybody keeps saying. I feel like I'm missing out on some sort of some sort of thing I'm supposed to know about. Yeah, it's been like uh up here in Wisconsin. It's been like uh oh, I don't even know. We had the second opener for the Mississippi River for duck hunting the other day, and we went out, and it was, uh, I think it was 22 degrees, something like that. And then we were out yesterday, and it was 32 with snow. I ain't ready for that yet. 43, to 43 in Oklahoma. That's still pretty cold, though, especially when you're all used to, like, you're used to nice weather, you know? Last thing you want to do is sit around at 40 degrees. It's been 60s and stuff. I know for us here, it's just been nuts. It's been, it was like, it was perfectly nice out. And then all of a sudden it was just like, hey, it's going to be 20 degrees and snowing. It's like, oh, man. Rover left Iowa because it was too cold. It's cold up here. I don't mind the cold so much as long as I'm, you know, like had some warning or some foreshadowing or something. But there's nothing. This year was crazy. I think we had like 75 or 80 degrees last week somewhere. Then it was just like, hey, we're going to go to 20 degrees. Oh, cool. Cool. So for the bill, I don't know. I mean, it's just so hard to tell with these things how it's going to act. I mean, we could. So the cool part about fusion is you can do this arc and it'll match the angles of everything for you. I think what I'm going to do is just go with a the standard bill on it, but that's like a deep diving bill. So I'll probably go with like this here, and then you can see it in relation to the bait. I think that's a decent size for it. So I'm going to stop that sketch. I found about three millimeters is a good thickness for PLA on parts that, that need to be pretty thick. So I'm going to go 1.5 on either side symmetric. So then we're at three. I'm going to make this. I'm going to modify that with a rule fillet. <laughs> rule fillet. I want to say fillet every time. But there we go. We got that set like that. So now we got a decent bill form in there. So now we can move that bill form into our mesh body. I'm going to go in here, move and copy. Can adjust it to whatever rake you want. Um, I'm going to probably go maybe like that. Maybe. Maybe like that. Let's see, uh, where were we? Yeah. To the original. Ah, it's pretty, it's, it's a lot more rake on there, I think, on the original. Even though, whoa, cancel. Even though the, uh, crankbait we're making is way different, I still want to kind of... That's pretty close. That's pretty close. I'm going to say pretty close to the right length, too, I think. So we're in there. Kind of looks like a mouse, to tell you the truth. I'm going to actually put it in a little bit more. Eh, no, I'm not. 
Yeah, maybe I am. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna leave it right there. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. So now we got our wireframe in there and our bill. So we got that all set up. Now what we have to do is we have to go back into one of these sketches. Let's just do this one. No, let's just do a brand new sketch because we're rebels like that. We're going to put in a um, chamber for rattling rattle chamber so I just put a line in there I'm gonna connect this line up with this so now we just have a crescent shape there I'm going to revolve that crescent shape around its own axis and I'm gonna make it a new body so it ends up being in the middle I'm gonna double check that on the mesh to make sure we're not crazily big, which, uh, <laughs> it is pretty big. So I'm going to come back in here and we don't need it that big. I'm going to do like that big. That looks good. Then I'm gonna revolve this around its own axis. I'm gonna make that a new body. Ah, much better, much better. I'm gonna say okay. So now what we have is essentially four parts. So we have the bill, the rattle chamber, and the wire guide, or the wire cutout, I guess, as well as the body. So now this is where we have a problem. So this is called the knife edge now. This is before mesh conversion. Save. Now what I'm going to do immediately after that is I'm going to say the knife edge after mesh conversion. There's a reason for that. When you convert the mesh you have to turn all your design history off and everything so uh, be sure to save it before and after. What are, what are we talking about here? Hot last week, yeah. Ron's water heater took a took a took a dirt nap. Cold showers do suck. Don't don't take cold showers. Warm it up on the stove. That's what it's for. He says when he started machining in the fifties, there were there were fillets and rounds. Fillets were inside corners and rounds were outside corners. Oh, how about that? I'm sure it's probably still that way. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Uh, oh, Rover says that, yeah, it looks like a mouse. Make a mouse bait. I should make a mouse bait. There's a guy on YouTube called Marling, Marling Baits. Yeah. Uh, great creator. If you haven't... Uh, if you're into like uh, hand woodworking, but like um, not the not the I'm a woodworker. I need to use this specific plane and this, that, and the other thing. If you just like to see guys make cool stuff, um, Marling Bates is one of the coolest uh, creators, especially for fishing tackle that there is. Just super, super cool. I'll put the link for his channel in the description down below. I'll do that right now so I don't forget. Um, super awesome. He doesn't really need any help from me. He's got uh, over 100,000, almost 100,000 subscribers now. But uh, super cool. M-A-R-L-I-N-G Bates. Anyway, long tangent for that. He handmade a, a chipmunk before. He's handmade a dragonfly lure before. Really cool. Uh, mouse, mouse lure is what got me on that. 
And then Ron says, we know the dif- we knew the difference between clearances and tolerances. That's true. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure the clearance is I don't even know. I mean, I know what it is. Clearance is model then tolerant no. Clearance is the part the difference between the part and tolerance is the model then spec, I think. I don't. That's why I just do iteration modeling. Bottom up, I think they call it. But I don't think there are rounds in CAD either. I don't know. I haven't. Seen, there might be in other types of CAD. It might be an Autodesk thing that they tried to make it more user friendly or something. I don't know. Because some guys use uh, that SK, Open SCAD and stuff. That's just completely uh, textual based, not graphical. I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd be lost like a child that wandered into a movie. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So I was in the ballpark. Ron says clearance is the distance between two surfaces. Tolerance is the variation allowed from a spe- specified dimension. So tolerance is essentially the wiggle room. So I rely entirely on tolerance. Because <laughs> I, just, I just make tolerance like... I just make my tolerances so large that the model couldn't help but work, you know? That's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually... I don't actually try and improve my designs. Come on now. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. That sounds like work. Sounds a lot like work. Um, Okay. Where were we? Okay, yeah, so if we do uh, the mesh conversion, right? So we can't do anything with this mesh body in Fusion 360 right now. For some reason, the mesh body is just like a thing that Autodesk doesn't want you to deal with in the model environment. So we have to go into the mesh environment. The problem with going into the mesh environment is that then you can't save your design history. So all this stuff down at the bottom of the screen there uh, would be that way to my head. All that design history goes away the second you go into mesh design. So we to get there, we have to do not capture design history. All right, so you can't capture in the timeline. You can't go back to your previous work. So I couldn't mess around with the bill as easily or the wireframe or anything. So you want to be on point with what you're doing. The other reason, that's the main reason that we save twice before we go into this. So I continue. So now we're uh, we're not capturing design history anymore. We can go up into the mesh. Uh, I guess you would call it the mesh workspace of Fusion 360. I'm going to modify, we need to reduce this mesh body because it's so many triangles that it just doesn't want to do it. I leave it stock, it seems to be fine. You say, okay. It's see how those triangles like went from being real small to being large, but it still kept the basic, well, kept all the integral integral details of that STL sculpted STL but it made those triangles much larger that allows fusion to convert it to an actual body way easier so then we get out of our mesh space we go to model we right click on our mesh body and we say <coughs> mesh to B rep we say we want a new body and it says a mesh contains a large number of facets Proceeding will result in slow performance. You got 14,000 essentially faces in there. Um, conversion's not recommended. Of course we're going to do it. So we say, okay, depending on your computer speed, uh, may or may not lock up, may or may not finish. I haven't had a problem with it. See, so now we're, uh, we got our STL into a workable Fusion 360 model, right? So we can go in here actually and mess with individual faces. Right, so 14,000 individual faces for that thing we can go back in and mess with. So we don't need that anymore. Now we have a body we can work with in Fusion. All right, let me catch up with comments here. 
Then there's G, D, and T. Yeah. Yeah, that's just how I roll, Ron. Hold my beer and watch this. And half the time, it it's not a good thing when I hold my beer and watch this. Although nobody's actually filmed any of those yet, so we're okay. Um, we I have a I built a small duck skiff for duck hunting with a mud motor on it, and this weekend we were jumping logs and everything, doing a lot of hold my beer moments. So I take I take that experience. I go into 3D modeling with that. Just run straight into a wall. See what happens. Um, okay, so we have an STL body. Uh, we had an STL. We brought it in, turned it into a mesh. Then we went in the mesh network, turned it into a BREP, which actually is a specific file like you would create with anything else in Fusion 360. Now we can modify that BREP. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out all these parts on the inside with the combine function uh, so that they leave voids, right? So we're going to go in, modify, combine. We're going to do the target body of that with the tool body of the bill. We're going to join those two because we want those solid. So we combine those into one body there, highlighted there and there. Then we're going to combine, do another combine with the wireframe and the weight holders, the weight cut out in there. And then we go to cut, you can see those turn red. So we know it's gonna cut, so we say okay. So now that'll be cut there. So now we got holes in there. On all the spots we need holes. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another sketch to the top. Oh, it's gonna turn me around. Nope, it didn't. We're gonna add another sketch. We're gonna go down the center of this thing. Let's say okay. We're gonna stop sketch. I'm gonna go modify split body we're going to split this body with this tool so now we're going to have two halves depending on speed it takes a while then we're going to go in here so now we have two halves we're going to go in here we're going to move copy and i'm going to rotate it on this which may or may not work yep move that to there and then I will free move it possibly if my computer doesn't freak out I free move it like that one more maybe yeah because I want the clearances Yeah, clearance, right? Let me check that again. Let me look up here. Clearance is the difference between two surfaces. Tolerance is the variation of specific. Okay, so one need to make sure the clearance is good between the bills here for printing. Let's say okay. Let me get this down here. So now this is essentially how we're going to print this. So you can see the wireframe gets in there, it's cut out. We have a spot for weights. So essentially you end up with this. Obviously a different design, but same thing. End up with that. Throw your weight in there, throw the, the wireframe in there, and hope, hope it works. So we end up with that there. And uh, so to export that, then you just right click on the whole project, say save as STL, say OK, find where you're at, you go like knife edge, uh, split STL for printing. We'll say that, say save. 
Well, thanks for the thumbs up, Rover. I appreciate that. Um, what do we have to do here? What do we? What do we? What do we have to do here? We have to go back to the webcam, because I need to figure out simplify 3D. Because I'm a simplify 3D shill, you know. I'm rolling in that money. I don't, they don't even know I exist, so. Um, okay. I'm going to bring the knife edge for printing into my slicer, I believe. So this is how it imports. If I can remember the movement commands and simplify. So this is how it imports. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I always have to check this because the X and Y is really goofy, the differences. You can go into Fusion 360 and set Z as the top down on Fusion if you want to. Uh, I just like modeling it left to right and doing quick on the fly. So for me, putting in negative 90 here to make it downside to the beds, not really a big issue for me. So I always print these like this. My process is pretty simple. Uh, I think I have three. Yeah, three layers, bottom, top, and outline, three perimeters. Um temp and stuff are relevant for whatever you're using for filament I print these in PLA I haven't noticed a huge issue uh, with them melting or anything in tackle boxes or anything like that just don't leave them out in the sun I have printed a few baits in PETG uh, it does work a little harder to glue together though because it's not very responsive to super glue just what it is uh, I do use CA glue Bob Smith Industries uh, for these um, baits seem to work just fine. Haven't had real any issues with that. For the weight, internal weight on these, I use number three steel shot that you buy for reloading. Hopefully that sounds as cool for you as it does for me. Probably not. Anyway, uh, steel shot for reloading works really well. It gives it a nice tingy sound, like a ting, 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 ting. Problem with that. This is my box of failure, by the way. As any great mind would know, that steel is iron, and iron rusts, so <laughs> these were nice and clear baits, uh, which are now brown. Um, yeah, but if that's the color you're going for, it works well. Otherwise, you could use smaller um, stainless steel ball bearings, uh, something like that. Steel shots is so cheap. Uh, and I shoot number threes, so I have a bag of that lying around. Um, but yeah, lead shot would also work. A little different sound with lead. You won't get this kind of nice sound, but you also won't get that iron oxide in there either. Um, let's see, let me check up on... Rover says the spacing between two bodies... They gave us a laugh out loud. Pins and holes, like index holes, he's asking for the two side, the two halves. I do... The only issue with that is then you would have to model up separate pins and then do additional holes because you want to print those two sides flat to the bed. Um, so if we had, like, we couldn't have... Thanks, Fusion. We couldn't have the pin sticking out on this side and then the hole in this side because then it wouldn't print very well. So what we'd have to do is 
do an index hole here, 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 and then print out smaller pins. Um, although I was thinking about that the other day, it would make putting them together 10 times easier. What I think I might do is try and find a standard something, you know, like, uh, like a 10 penny nail or something like that, or, uh, maybe a tack of a certain size. And then what you could do is, uh, just model it for that. Like I I've done this before with, uh, coat hangers, metal coat hangers. If you can find them anymore, the plastic mafia have made metal coat hangers like non-existent anymore. But if you find metal coat hangers, those are a standard diameter. So then you could do index holes on there. So if I can find a really good design that I like a lot, uh, that's doing a lot of good action and stuff, I'll probably do some index holes. That'd be a lot nicer than trying to line it up. It's not the most difficult thing in the world uh, to line them up. Like you can, you, usually what I do is I take one bill and then just pop it on there. I don't use the activator or accelerator, excuse me, for the the uh, super glue. I don't do that uh, when I'm lining it up because it's just so fast that you'll get a missile line like that. And before you know it, it's, you know, you're done. Like it's throw it away, reprint it. Um, I printed, I printed about 10%, uh, for just testing purposes. And then on finals, I usually print it at about 20%, maybe 30%. Um, just depends on the buoyancy you want. The higher percentage of infill, obviously the less buoyant it is. These aren't exactly waterproof, uh, just by the nature of how you put them together and being in two halves, they're not completely waterproof, but what you can do is you can use, um, I use a, uh, polyurethane. That's what I want to say. Yeah, it's a urethane spray, just a spray can. And I'll spray them, and then they become uh, waterproof. So you can airbrush them and then spray them uh, to lock them in. You can dip them in like a fiberglass boat epoxy as well. I've seen that. You can also use uh, the waterproofing for like the balsa bait work. Uh, but that stuff's like super sketchy, man. Like, I don't know. You know, like wear a mask and all that. So but just using a cheap spray can bottle with some poly uh urethane works fine uh for me i lose these in the rocks every time i go fishing anyway so you know it's a fun pastime if you live by a reservoir that gets drawn down a lot you can go out when it's at low water and go pick up a lot of crankbaits save yourself a lot of money ron says it's their rare find uh Metal coat hangers. Hard to break into a car with a plastic coat hanger. I would imagine it's pretty tough. That's when you know you have real talent. And then Rover says matching holes and a print peg at the same time. Yeah. I could see it happening. The problem is that they're just so these things are so small that your peg is gonna have to be like two millimeters, three millimeters. And then you have to deal with like either your brim or your elephant foot potentially and stuff. So you'd have to, uh, your tolerance, tolerances, yes, would have to reflect, uh, the inaccuracy of the printing process. So if I could find a standard that everybody's got around the house, then I could model it just 0.2 millimeters above that. And then, then we won't have to worry about it. the other, uh, thing I was thinking of is uh just model like essentially model a through hole on each side right then you just line it up and then just thread in an m3 with a recessed hole here just thread an m3 on either side and then th they're locked together there um you would only have to like glue the bill together to keep it down and then uh don't even have to worry about it. The problem with that is you kind of 
mess up some of your hydro uh, dynamics and stuff on the side because you'll have a dimple and uh, you know it's that's all big thing it's all a big thing but I've been knocking these things out like nobody's business did this one last night before bed I don't know what I call this one but kind of like a little little smaller one with a with a triangle bill uh, I I don't know why I just figured why not you know if you're not modeling something you're just it's just a waste you gotta do it that shell is printed like virtually impossible there are a lot of good 3D printers out there, a lot better than me, <laughs> that would probably have no problem printing really high resolution uh, ind indices, but not me. Not me. I know that for sure. Definitely not me. So on those basic settings for the print, right, I'm let's run it through there it ends up being 46 minutes to print one of these out you know and then what i end up doing is i just uh this is 0.2 layer heights uh you could go down to 0.1 or something but what i end up doing is i just fill up the bathtub up to the top and then i got a little ice fishing rod <sighs> little ice fishing rod with a cheapo snap swivel on there. Let's see. Let's get a. Let's get. Let's get back to uh, just the webcam. Little cheapo ice fishing rod, and then uh, snap swivel. You just run it. Just run it in the bathtub. Standard side bath bathtub. You know. Just give her back and forth. Watch the action. See what happens. Um most of the time they don't work and then they go in the the box box of shame I call it there's, there's quite a few in there if you haven't seen them yet um yeah let's see let, let me get back to uh, back to reality here and then, uh, so, if you guys haven't seen it yet, oh, my chair almost broke. The locker in. If you haven't seen this video yet, go check it out. Uh, this is Rolly, remote controlled, uh, remote controlled cable camera for GoPros as well as DSLRs. If you haven't checked, made from a motor from Walmart toy car so if you haven't seen that check that out i originally made this because here in these united states of america uh it's pretty much illegal to look at your drone and uh like even if you just you know look at it wrong they arrest you you can't you can't walk out the house nearly anymore without having to get a permit for something uh but yeah, you can't fly your drones pretty much in any public area, and especially in Wisconsin, you can't fly a drone uh, anywhere on wildlife management areas, any wildlife refuges, national or state, any Department of Natural Resources controlled lands, no cities, no townships unless specifically allowed to. And the only option you can really do is on county property, um, which is maybe 8% of the public land in Wisconsin. So this is a way to get around that. You string out a long cable like 100 to 200 feet, and then you can roll this back and forth and get some cool panning shots and stuff. So If you haven't seen that, check that out. Also this, this is a gimbal-type cup holder that keeps your drinks from spilling. There's a video or two on that. Check that out as well. All STL files are on Thingiverse.
Ron says that's a cool camera accessory. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. Rover says, have you done the fishing pole idea yet? Trying to get it to work and be strong enough is the hard part. You know? Trying to model it up to where you can have it kind of fold out and work. I think if you did maybe like a travel kind of fishing rod situation and then they had old school rods back in the day that were uh, they were through eye rods I don't know what they were called I've fished a couple before and there could be companies that are still making them but they're like eyeless fishing rods let's see if I can't find some here they do make it they still make it how about them apples how about them apples let's see this one is this it that that might be it maybe that doesn't look like it hold on I'm getting it I'm getting it, I promise. I'm getting it. It'll it all makes sense in a second. Everything will come together. Maybe not. <laughs> they make them though. They make them. What is this one? I just saw this. Yeah, okay. No. Nope. Uh, at any rate, they had made an eyeless fishing rod, and they're they're not like that crazy like not around anymore situation. Guys still use them, but uh. I don't think they're made that much anymore. But it's essentially this this situation here. Let's see, I'll bring this over. I don't think I can actually. Let's bring this here and then I'll bring you back here. So this this number so they are I was thinking about doing this um doing something like this for printing and doing it as a travel rod right so instead of relying on any sort of eyes or anything you'd have it systematically larger cones and then you could have like the line go through the middle of it right and then you wouldn't have to worry about eyes breaking off or anything and then you could do it in a in a flexible material like PETG but you would have to print it like um, you have to print it, print it lengthwise on the bed right without support material which is very difficult because if you were to print it um, standing up your layer lines would be at the point of flex right and then you have the the uh more severe case of delamination there so but yeah i've been thinking about that a little bit yeah i had a, a fish with a neighbor out on the columbia river um i can't remember where we were we might not have even been on the Columbia. We might have been on the Snake River in uh, essentially a Hell's Canyon area. And he was fishing with a, a through hole rod for Chinook salmon. It blew my mind. Blew my mind. Didn't even know they did that. I was like, that's cool. But then I was like, when uh, bringing up the rod, I was like, hey. I was like that it's possible it's just i think you know 
you either have to be really in spec with your layer lines and getting really good fusion on those, or you have to come up with a way to print like eight or nine pieces on the bed with the layer lines going vertically up the rod, right? That'd be tough. Rover says, how about leaf spring design? Say three or four of them with the I in the, the end. Leaf spring design, three or four of them with I in the end. You might have to elaborate on that a little bit more. I'm kind of getting confused. Leaf, leaf spring design, say three or four of them. Like stack and glue it together? I guess you could you could glue it together too, I suppose. You could almost treat it as like a making a bamboo fly rod if you've ever seen people make bamboo rods before. That's kind of cool. I guess you could piece it together. I was thinking more like a series of like Russian nesting dolls type scenario, you know, but not <laughs> I don't know how to explain it much more than that, but nested cone a nested cone design in which you could kind of do this number. You'd be like, hi -yah! And then it would come out kind of like cane poles. Uh, not traditional cane poles, but short leaf, medium leaf, long leaf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. I get, I get what you're saying. I think we're, we're saying the same thing. Essentially, I think. You could do an eye like every little bit, but I think the problem with the eye is it puts undue pressure on a specific part of it. If you, if you see what I mean, like the eye is taking the pressure. So like you can see the flex on this rod, like that front eye is supporting pretty much all of it at this point. Then the second, then the third and at this point it's all on this last eye right you can pretty much not see anything move right so I just don't know if printing's at a point where we can get things strong enough to where we can have that amount of flex in something like graphite can right because graphite has this the fibers orientated in, in the correct manner right but if there's any uh filament companies out there that say you know he doesn't know what he's talking about our stuff is awesome well feel free to contact me email is in the about page I'll try it. I'll try anything once. Twice if I had some two tree beers. Ron saying the outside of the rod could be square or rectangular. Rectangular. Yeah, that could work. It would give it a little more strength actually if you did it like in a triangle. I think, yeah. Yeah, to have a little bit more backbone. I'd just be worried about the delamination. You could almost coat those though in like a like a rod building epoxy, like a like a guide uh, thread epoxy, so it's really really kind of loose. It's an epoxy, but it doesn't get uh, it doesn't have a really high hardness value, so it has some flex in it. That would work. possible anyway what do i know i'm just some guy just some guy on the internet but that means it's got to be true right because it's on the interwebs so i gotta be only speaking the truth and know everything because i'm on the internet that's how that works
Whew. All right, fellas. I think I'm about done. Should probably hit the sack. Responsibilities and all that. I yearn for the days where you just wait at the corner and let the school bus pick you up. Mom had dinner ready for you. The biggest decision you had to make that day was what shorts am I going to wear? Not anymore. Not anymore. But hope you guys have a good one. Keep your amps up and your filament dry. Now, now this is the awkward part where I try and figure out what button to hit. I think it'll be right there. Oh, now it's another one.